Just fine, according to Manchester United's manager. Myrtle is out the door. It has been confirmed. There's been quite a lot going on this afternoon. Obviously, the embargo version of this press conference ahead of the game against Liverpool this weekend has come out. And there's some very interesting comments because this would have been done last night after the Chelsea game. So emotions are raw. Everything is heightened in a different way. The excitement factor is still there. The anger is still there. The aggression answering questions about a game that is coming straight after dealing with the aftermath of the carnage which was last night was not easy has that come across in Eric Ten Hag's words in this press conference ahead of the Liverpool game we're going to get into that now it is Friday night get a beer get comfortable people this is for every night TV I'm Adam welcome along to the live show please give the video a like and please do subscribe if you are tuning in for the first time if you just want your content straight to the point I'm not going to fluff it up I'm just going to give it your and I give it your hard. Uh, I'll stop talking. That's going in the wrong direction. But yeah, get your comments in as well, guys. Let's get into what is going on uh, at United right now this afternoon. It seems like we have a break for a couple of hours and then the shit just hits the fan yet again and something else comes up out of the blue. Like, my God, we just don't... We, we are like... We are suckered in, aren't we? We're like flies on shit, Manchester United. We're just attracted to the crap, aren't we? That's what it is. Everything that's going wrong just get blown up any news at all just springs out of bleeding nowhere like it's like wow where did that come from anyway yeah i mean john myrtle we'll get into that in a bit that's been confirmed by the athletic today that conversations have been had there and pretty much confirmation that he is out of the door and there's no other way around it for him i'll get into it in a minute but yes the top headline it's like eric i said it this morning just oh man like you, you can you could try and defend him all you want. Like, he's a likeable guy in a way. He is. Like, if you meet him, and I've met him a few times, Eric, uh, you know what? He is He's polite. He's well-educated. He is knowledgeable. But sometimes you just scratch your head and go, no, Eric, I'm sorry, you're not getting away with that again. Like, stop saying it. Stop saying these things. Stop lying to the fans. Like the latest comments have come out. Obviously, we had we touched on it a little bit last night, but this is the first time that our manager has had a chance to address uh, what has been. Oh wait, mate, we've got some breaking news here. There is a desperado in the house. Uh, that yes, uh, the best way I could describe Manchester United right now is in this bottle. Desperados, five point nine percent volume. That's about our shot accuracy right now. Uh, I would say. It's about the possession we get in the opposition's box. Uh, the only difference between this and Manchester United is... I'm just going to enjoy this. Mm. Ah, happy Friday, everyone. Let's go. <laughs> if you don't laugh, you'll cry. I nearly did last night, but I thought, you know what? Forget it. I'm, just, I'm not going to let it affect me. I spoke with Andy. Uh, Andy Tate, he said to me, he said, you know what? I just chuckled last night at it. It's got to a stage now where you just have to look at him and go, I'm not surprised. And yeah, just laugh it off. That's where we're at. But Ten Hag has come out and addressed what has been happening in terms of Rashford's brother obviously come out regarding podcasts, talking about that, about ex-footballers, people that they actually know and cross paths with. Like seriously, like everyone I seen reacting to that post on social media, uh, it was done on Instagram. But looking on Twitter, that's where it all blows up. That's where the poison is, and everyone reacting to it. So people in sports media, everyone around the the world, the journalists and everything like that, covering United, not just United, every other broadcaster as well. It just looked at it and went, we can see quite clearly where the issue is with Marcus Rashford. Do you know what? There is probably. That guy, that player in there with Marcus, there really is. Uh, and you know what? I won't begrudge anyone sticking by their family and supporting their family and listening uh, to their family. Blood is thicker than water at the end of the day. But Marcus Rashford's people, let's just say, his entourage, mainly his family, and his brother in this instance, which is why I'm saying that, has just dropped him right in the shit. And it's like, just, Marcus, separate yourself and you will see a whole different world. You will, but he's not going. He's not going to, and we just deal with it. We move on. But yeah, the reaction to that has been one of like Rashford. He's dragging you down. But Eric Ten Hag had a chance to address it. Obviously, after the game, he came out and said Marcus Rashford 
was dropped. No, I mean, before the game, actually. He said, Marcus Rashford was dropped for rotational purposes and trying to keep everyone fresh. Okay, move on. No problem. We were just happy that Rashford had been dropped because he doesn't warrant a place in the side right now. So we move on. And then you're looking at the press conference afterwards, which, like I just said at the start of the show, is split into two. You'll have the post-match press conference from the Chelsea game. And because there isn't enough time with travelling and the game and press conferences needing to be... Uh, held before the weekend, so the only chance they would have had is Friday. They would have done the press conference for the Liverpool game at Stamford Bridge last night, and this is where all these quotes are now coming from. So, Ten Hag, when asked regarding Arcus Rashford, his form, and the criticism, the podcast, everything that was going on, which was in the news, his response to that was this. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what Gary Neville was saying uh, Ten Hag said, I think lately his, Rashford's in brackets, form is progressing. Uh, he has been, he has a big motivation because he wants to be successful with us. He wants to win trophies. And he wants to score gold. <laughs> It gets worse. It sets you up in each part of this paragraph. It just gets comical as it goes along. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. I was just setting myself up for a fall there in reading that out. But this is actual quote unquote from Eric Ten, <laughs> from Eric Ten Hag. He wants to score goals. No shit, Sherlock. He wants to win and contribute, and we have a chance with the FA Cup. Of course we do. Uh, he wants to fight for a Champions League spot and the Euros are coming. So his motivation should be high. Uh, the form, he can change the momentum always. He scored before uh, Brentford. He scored three goals in three games. Where are them straws I need to clutch at? Oh my God. Like, this is why you sometimes just... <laughs> Oh, God. this is why you just have to laugh sometimes and go, he's only doing his job, Eric. Bless him. Bless him. But he's talking complete and utter bollocks. He really is like, shut up, man. Like, seriously. Like, I said at the start, and didn't I? I was getting into it before my desperado arrived and I got sidetracked. That, you know what? Eric is a very knowledgeable man. He's a really nice guy. He really is. I've met him a few times. I've been in many press conferences, as most of you know. And... I think he does get tripped up a lot of the time by the questions. The language barrier is massive for him, and he just doesn't come across right. He doesn't. He never comes across how he wants it to with Eric, and that's not his fault. Like he's doing his best on that side of it. My issue with Eric mainly is like when he's trying to convince us that Marcus Rashford is in form, like he is progressing. Like progressing from what? This is a man in the prime of his career. What's he progressing from, Eric? And then I start thinking, that's when I start getting wound up with it. I start going, right, you're progressing from you, Eric, letting him off the hook for his Belfast Bebe episodes when he was caught out on the two nights on the piss and couldn't turn up to training. This is what he's progressing from. This it all stems from that. Because there's nothing else that he can be pro pro progressing from, is there? God, that's just words really tripping me up. And it's not the Desperado, I promise you. But this is everything that happened in January. This is all this is. It has to be this because there's nothing else. He's in the prime of his career or he's at the age of his prime of his career. He's the most senior player at this football club right now, Marcus Rashford. He's been here longer than anyone in this team right now. What is he progressing from? He should have already progressed and already be pulling up trees right now. That's where he should be, Marcus Rashford. That's where he should be, Eric Ten Hag. There's no progression at all in Marcus Rashford. Like, he's already peaked. He ain't going to get any better. He's not going to get any better under Ten Hag because in Ten Hag's eyes, Marcus Rashford, apparently, he's okay. And he scored three goals in three before Brentford. Let's just forget about the shit at Brentford and Chelsea then, shall we, Eric? I mean, yeah, the two games that has really cost us the Champions League. Ooh, again, like, for God's sake, man. What are we dealing with here at this football club? Oh, God, you can see why I'm laughing because I can easily get myself wound up just talking about this shit. I really can. And I'm just, I'm blown away by the crap that comes out from Manchester United. This protective bubble around these players and everyone within Manchester United, for God's sake, this is the real world. We're not stupid. 
There's a video that has circulated social media all day showing Marcus Rashford yet again mopesing, jogging around the pitch. There's that moment when he was tracking Cole Palmer. Like, Cole Palmer picked it up in his own half. Marcus Rashford's the furthest man forward, the closest to him. He just jogs over. Eh, it's like the Ross Barkley one against Luton. It's like the uh, this Liverpool centre-back, I can't remember his name now, the youngster, who just ran past him for their goal, their first goal, I think it was, in the FA Cup tie at Old Trafford. He's now being called out by former players. He's been called out by pundits all over. Everyone can see what's going on. Everyone can see Marcus Rashford does not give a shit. He really doesn't. Otherwise, he'd have been busting a gut running all over that pitch against Chelsea. We're free to up and he's letting Cole Palmer have the freedom of Stamford Bridge. Eric Ten Hag to come out and defend him for me, is why, again, he will end up getting the sack. Everyone who defends Marcus Rashford, everyone who keeps playing Scott McTominay as a starter, keeping Martial at the club, whether they had a say in it or not, Martial's slightly different to Marcus Rashford, in my opinion. But you know where I'm going with it, don't you? Everyone who's done it has said bye-bye, and the careers have gone literally down the swan air. This is supposed to be the pinnacle of world football. Managing one of the greatest clubs ever, and it is one of the greatest clubs ever. I don't care what any opposition fan says. Manchester United is a fantastic football club. And one of uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, thank you. I remember it. I was getting mixed up with uh, someone else then, Graham. That's the one. That was a centre-back for Liverpool. The young lad. Good player, by the way. And you should be at the height of your career. But all this job does is destroy managers, destroy players. It's all it is. And... I just look at it and I go, Eric, just be you, mate. I know he's... I, this is what worries me, like, at the football club, like, the bigger concern, like, this isn't the Eric Ten Hag that walked through the door at Manchester United. This isn't the t a Ten Hag that was dealing with Jadon Sancho. This is a man that's not afraid to uh, play Scott McTominay ahead of Casemiro. So why is Marcus Rashford waltzing around this pitch doing whatever he wants, knowing that he's going to get a guaranteed place in this team? This is the problem that Ten Hag has got. And again, it leads back into the video that we did this morning and why Ten Hag will be sacked, because he's fallen into that trap. Marcus Rashford could have been a great player. He is a good player that will never see that great potential fulfilled. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. The only way that Rashford will ever see them, them heavy heights of being up there as seen as one of the world's best forwards is if he leaves that bubble, which is Manchester United. He is protected beyond. I don't care if uh, if this scuppers any chance of me getting any access or anything down the line with United or anything like that. So, like, you know what? People just have to say it as it is. Like, Ten Hag, I feel, has changed while he's been at Manchester United. We've seen the change. And I just think he's just digging himself a hole even bigger when he comes out and defends players like Rashford like this. Marcus Rashford doesn't care about Ten Hag. He just looks like he's just seen out the season, cannot be bothered. He's got eight games to go. He will turn up in the semi-final against Coventry. Wouldn't be surprised if Rashford scored an hat-trick and put United in the final. And it will be social mediaised up that Marcus Rashford, hat-trick hero, takes United to a third final in two seasons. I can see the headlines. I know how this football club works and I know how football works around Manchester United. Everyone loves the United headline, whether it's good, bad. Everyone needs United. But the problem United have got is they are a victim of their own downfall, of their own creation. They are. They have created the people that work within this football club. They are they are the people that are really killing the football club. And that's the players. It is the players. The owners. The people the owners put in next to them over the years. Like, yes, this can change. This can change under Ineos. It's too late for Ten Hag, though. Like Too much damage has been done. He hasn't got the full support of the fan base. Now, a lot have turned and seen enough. And him backing players that everyone can see don't give a shit, not giving a shit, he's going to end up just, like I said, digging his hole even deeper, nailing another nail into that coffin, which is the Ten Hag out-the-door coffin. Uh, it's on the hearse and away it goes. That is what's going to happen with Ten Hag. 
Super chat in from MDR Samurai. Legend, mate, thank you. Uh, no one is picking Rashford to track when protecting a lead. Uh, and when Eric Tenag needs a 10, 8 or a 6, why is his choice always meant Tomine? Heads blown. Heads gone. Heads gone. Definitely. And I think that is the big problem with Ten Hag. It, it's, it's the football that's being played. It's why Manchester United always revert to defending when we take a lead and we can't finish teams off. And then he's just pure selection favouritism. And what have we heard and what are the leaks? I don't like leaks. I don't think they're right. But every time a leak comes out, what comes out? Favouritism talk. How he treats other players differently uh, to other players in the in the squad. This is an issue that I don't think now he has time to rectify. And I think the writing... As always, with all managers at this football club, he's well and truly on the wall. Gary Pearson, Tony Callaghan, Chrissy Hilton, uh, Lane, uh, Lane's RA and Robbie Salmon. Welcome to the Members Club, my friends. Donated by that man, that legend, that has got Scolzi on his profile picture, Daz Salford69. Thank you very much, Daz, and welcome to the Members Club, guys. Make sure you do give Daz a big, big thank you in the live chat as well for that donation. Kind donation from Daz. Thank you. He's cheering everyone up before Liverpool, I think. Uh, and coming into the chat, guys, get your comments in now. Here we go. I'm going to go from bottom to top this time. Let's just start here with... Uh, I want to see Ahmad in over Rashford, says Danny G. So do I, mate. Chris Sell, all these players give up on managers really easily sell them all i wish we could chris i've got 16 on my out list just so you know uh i'm in says adam don't we need i'm about to in midfield anymore 10 hag favorites I just i just explain why and we're getting that i mean i'm about if you're going to defend it's probably a better option than scott mctominay in my opinion in my opinion i will say that to make sure that i'm not saying uh, that Scott isn't as good as Amrabat. If we need a goal, I bring Scott on. If we want to defend, I bring Amrabat on. I think it makes sense because that's their natural position. Scott's more of a forward thinking forward, uh, sorry, midfielder, and Amrabat is more of a defensive type midfielder. What did we need yesterday? We needed someone to just solidify, solid, solid, solidify things up and just sit there in front of the back four and see it out. But no. No, we went with tried and trusted. Oh, trusted. Never mind. Uh, no, actually, tried. Trusted is uh, debatable. It really is. Uh, Sean, super chat. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, Rashford, uh, you have no idea how much money I've turned down to stay here. Uh, while he makes 350 per week, poor, poor Marcus. He's made so many sacrifices. Let's not forget the free buses that he needed to take to get to training. You know what, that hardship of uh, public transport. Jesus. Yeah, you know where I'm going with that. When defending when defending a lead, you have to bring on Amrabat. I'm the Arthur Green with me on that one. Cobblers, Amrabat is not a great defensive player in the Premier League. He's better than Scott Graham. That's a dead cert. Scott's give away free kicks left, right and centre. Scott's a different player. I'm sorry, I'm not having it. Scott's better in the air, I'll give him that. But as a defender, no. If you need to show things up, Amrabat can do that job. He can. Again, he's not a starter, like Scott. If you were going to pick one of them to come on to try and defend, then you pick the defensive midfielder, do you not? The one that we've actually spent a stupid amount of money on, even though we're not using him. Yeah, well... That's just the way it is, isn't it? I think we have another donated membership, which has gone to DJ United. And that's come from the Honest Tiger. Thank you so much. Uh, guess, by the way, I need you to send me a DM for your prize for the competition that the Honest Tiger kindly donated. We need to send you your pride, guess. Uh, so if you can just uh, DM me on Instagram or on Twitter. Both, uh, everybody already knows. Uh, and... Yeah, if you are unsure, then just put a message in or a comment in on this show. Once it finishes, I'll come back to you as well. Uh, let's get that sorted so you can get your prize of guessing the exact time and goal scorer. That was crazy, that last night. It really was. I forgot all about that with the carnage, which was the actual game itself, that guess actually got Garnacho in the 34th minute. Like, <laughs> what are the odds on that? 
Adam, finally someone that uh, says exactly what I think when I hear Eric Tanag speak. It's nonsense, and he has to stop. I am Eric Tanag in, but he needs to stop the bullshit. No, I'm not, you know what, Pascal? It's... I've mentioned... I've brought in all of the defensive side to Eric Ten Hag. Like, he has changed. United has changed him. Uh, I can see he wants to do things differently. I really can. I can see the culture that he's built. And it's like what Laurie Whitwell said today. If you haven't read it, go and read it in terms of his piece on how he has to look at Eric Ten Hag and his role at the football club. He's all too happy to be a head coach. Apparently, that's now seen as complete bollocks, which was the interview with Dutch media when he took the job. And it being a definite necessary, otherwise he's not taking the role, that being he needs to have final say on transfers and have his veto. Uh, that is now not true. And Ten Hag is all too willing to drop down to head coach and work under the structure of Ineos. The only reason that Ten Hag was involved so much was because things weren't working right at United and he was helping change the culture of the football club. I think he has done... He has done some good work in that area. I'm not gonna I'm not just gonna disregard what good Eric Tenag has done because he has done quite a lot behind the scenes. And he's set a new a new standard of behaviour at least in how players in how players are off the pitch. Like standards on it, I I have got no defence for him because we're shit. Uh, and we've probably got worse. But off the pitch, he's done a lot of good, so I'm not going to ignore that. I, I'm not just going to go all in on him. I, I like to balance the argument out, as you guys know. Uh, the language barrier, which I've already mentioned, he struggles with when he talks as well. It doesn't come across the right way half the time, and I think the media actually have a field day with him. Uh, and I'm not surprised he has banned parts of the media uh, this season as well, as we knew. Uh, was it before the FA Cup game? I think it was somewhere around that time, uh, early on in the year when he banned certain sections of the media for stories that were being leaked. Uh, it's, I just think he's got himself lost. He's got himself lost in the power that is at the hands of the manager, usually at Manchester United. But it's quite clear that this is a beast of a football club which needs more than one man. It needs more than one brain. Richard Arnold and Myrtle going pretty much confirms that United have been working with the wrong people. Like Ten Hag, as much as he's wanted to change Manchester United, working alongside Myrtle, and this has been proven that this is where his downfall has been as well within the transfer market, he's leaving this summer. And that's other news that has come out today, uh, which I'll just touch on now and get your fin- get your uh, get all your opinions on, is that John Myrtle was offered a role stepping down doing uh, something else at Manchester United, different to what he's doing now, which is his director of football job, whatever uh, uh, he has now come to a decision alongside the club, uh, an amicable, an amicable decision, uh, both agreeing that it's best for both parties to part ways and John Myrtle go in a different direction. I think he wants a bigger role, but like we all know, he is not qualified for at Manchester United, never was, uh, never will be, and it is the end of John Myrtle. So we are seeing change. We are seeing good off the pitch. Unfortunately, it's just come too late for our man, Eric. And I think he is a lamb to the slaughter and will be next out of the door. I am convinced of it. I'm not saying that I want this. I would love to see Eric Ten Hag with a full structure, working as a head coach and someone else taking the responsibility away from him. I would. I would like to see what he's got. But can we honestly sit there and say we can put up with another year, maybe two years of this football and the excuses that come with it when we lose? I keep going back to it. And like I said, I'm not using the injuries as an excuse. Like, yeah, it plays a part. You can't rotate. You can't keep people fresh. But don't try and tell me that that changes your style of football and that that stops you from creating an identity at this football club. No, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. Because after we beat Chelsea at Old Trafford, there wasn't any problems there with injuries. After we beat Aston Villa, there wasn't any problems there, was there either? There was no issue or even talk of injuries then. But when them games after that came, the West Ham game, I think the Forest game as well, I think it was, the Bournemouth one was one as well, uh, all of a sudden injuries and all excuses came out. Like, well, no, a few days before... Manchester United were great and there was no problems with injuries. That's because we were winning. 
Like, you cannot set up one agenda and then change it the week after. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not on. It's not on. No one's falling for it. No one's falling for it. Uh, quickly, uh, updates on what has been going on in Manchester here, actually. Not too far away from me. Uh, breaking news is that this is in local reports as well. Uh, the, the the news story came out before the United side of things came out on this one. So if you're wondering about what's going on with the headlines, earlier on today, uh, remains of a body were found in what is called a woodland area called the wetlands in, in Salford. Uh, not far, stones throw away from Manchester United's Cliff Academy. Uh, the old training grounds, which says, Breaking news, Manchester United's academy base area has been closed off after human remains were found just yards away from the facility. Uh, that story is uh, in the MEN, if anyone wants to read it and know what's actually happening. It doesn't relate to United, but because it is so close to the cliff training ground in that area, uh, that is why Carrington, not Carrington, bloody hell, God, heaven forbid, uh, that is why the cliff, the old training ground, has been closed down. So, yeah, that story, just so you know, while it's floating around, I thought I'd just touch on that. It's not a million miles away from us. And, yeah, quite scary stuff. Uh, God knows uh, what's going on. But, yeah, it's nothing to do with United. That's all we can say. <laughs> At least I hope not. That would be... That would be the straw that breaks the camel's back, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, let's get into some more of your chat. Excuse Ten Hag, says United Spotlight. Uh, young Lion, Ten Hag, won titles at Ajax in his second half. Uh, in his second half, season three, more. Do you really think that Ten Hag can win a title in the Premier League with the opposition that we have got? This is the difference. Like People say, look, Ten Hag, he's won things. Give him time. He'll show that he can do it again. I think David Moyes, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Ralph Ranić, Jose Mourinho, Louis van Gaal. I think all of them managers would win trophies in uh, in the Eredivisie as well. I do. I'm not disrespecting the division, but when you've got the best teams on the planet ahead of you, which we have got, barring Real Madrid, I'd say, and Bayer Leverkusen right now, I think Arsenal, City and Liverpool would all compete with any of them teams that I just mentioned there. Like uh, Leverkusen and, let's say, Real Madrid. They're probably the two other standout teams in Europe right now. Anyone else? Anyone want to throw in there into Milan? I think Arsenal compete with all of them. Liverpool do and City do. We have got the best in the business in this division right now. And you don't just win trophies like that. You cannot just win trophies by creating a style of football alone. You need to build that culture with that style of football. Have the full package. Have you got what it takes? A manager may have that with the structure that United are building under Ineos. Yes, that is a possibility. And Ten Hag might, if he had come in at the right time, been able to build that. Two years too late, I think, for Ten Hag is the feeling right now. Too much water has gone under the bridge. And I think his time has been and gone. Unfortunately for him, I do believe that Ten Hag in a different era, in another year, if Ten Hag was walking through that door, I think we'd have been all getting really excited because we would have had a a proper structure and what looks like a real progressive football manager coming through the door. But it's... Oh. I sadly, you know what? It's like half of me really wants it to work for him and him to turn it around. And then I see things that go on today, like when he talks, and I'm just like, you're defending your problem. Like you are trying to fix a problem which is unfixable, which is Marcus Rashford. Like you cannot change Marcus Rashford. You cannot change the way he is. You cannot move him away from his representation and what is destroying his career, in my opinion. Like, his brother is not helping him at all. That has been echoed by a lot of reporters and a lot of people in football uh, over social media over the last couple of nights, a uh, couple of days, sorry, after what his brother did in posting that on Instagram. It's embarrassing for him. And like Tanag said there in his uh, 
in his quote about what Gary Neville said, so it's Gary Neville and Rio Ferdinand, you look at it and you go, you're talking complete and utter bollocks, Eric. Everyone knows what Marcus Rashford is. Everyone knows what they're watching on the pitch. You cannot defend him. You can't tell us that we're seeing something different. You're talking about Marcus Rashford scoring three goals before Brentford and Chelsea, trying to cover up the way he played against Brentford and Chelsea. We just watched them games and seen him not asked at all. He scored against Liverpool finally when it was put on a plate for him by Scott McTominay. What was his other one? Everton, was it? A penalty that was handed to him by Bruno Fernandes. Soft-soaped. Again, let's not forget the goals that he scored. And you know what, Eric? It's, it's, we, I think, I think the whole fan base has tried to warn him. Like, he must know what goes on. The club will tell him what goes on. And you know what? Uh, you can be arrogant, you can be stubborn, stuck in your ways, thinking you know best until it's too late. And that's what happens with Manchester United managers. It happens to them all. They know best. They can change United. David Moyes came in, he tried to do it his way, failed. Jose Mourinho tried his way, failed. It is changing. The next manager, I think, will have a great opportunity at this football club. I do. I think it will work for United with the new structure because Jose Mourinho's issue with Paul Pogba, that's not going to happen again. You're not going to have players down in tools and not working just to see out the next manager to bring in someone else and reset and go again. Like Marcus Rashford's career, he's literally just going to completely fall off a cliff if he doesn't pull his finger out. The next manager coming in, he's going to want another player in to play his system. Marcus Rashford isn't going to be in that starting lineup, I don't think, when a new manager comes through the door. He needs to have a hard, long look at himself, Marcus Rashford, and decide what he wants to do with his career and where he wants to go. Because I feel like now this is that moment. Like I thought it was that moment in January when he got away with the Belfast Bebe episode. I do. I thought that would be the moment where he's just like, right, decide where you want to go from here, Marcus. This is your moment. Now, which way are you going to go? And all we've seen is bitching and moaning about how people are actually talking about him. And you know what? Everyone moved on. We just wanted to see him play football. Like, go play football, let's see what you can do. And everyone's complaining about his football and his form, and they've moved it into another realm again, talking about what his antics are and how he's treated off the pitch. Forget about the money that you're on. Like, I've not even brought that up. Like, people bring up the 350 a week, like, all the time. Ten Hag talks about the progression of Marcus Rashford. There's no progression. He's already peaked. He's not going to get any better. So I don't know what he's talking about there. No one's mentioned his wages. All anyone is talking about is what he's doing on the pitch. And Ten Hag is part of that problem by playing him and then defending him when he's shit. Uh, it, he's the maker of his own downfall, Eric Ten Hag, in big parts. <clears throat> and he's going the same way that everyone else did in trying to sucker up to these players uh, and try and convince themselves that they are better than what they actually are. Louise says, agree, Adam, might be right, man. Wrong time in Eric, Ten Eric Ten Hag's case. It, it, sadly, it is that, isn't it? It is too much water has gone under the bridge, like I said, and he's already fallen out with too many people. That's the problem. It would help if Eric had another number nine. Well, again... He backed Martial. He kept backing him. He didn't bring enough in in the summer. He should have demanded. And you know what? If he had that money, he could have looked at it and gone, look, I've been warned about Martial. I've seen him in his first season. Wasn't good enough. Never available. All Eric Tanag said was he has to want to play. He said it about six times in press conferences. Graham's right. It would have helped him, but Eric Tanag could have made that happen as well. He could have forced Martial out of the door and told Man United to go out and get another striker. He was forced to bring in Valt Vegas, for God's sake. Like, that is desperation. If that's not telling you last season that you need another number nine in the summer, then I don't know what is. Like, one number nine of a player that is unproven in Rasmus Hoyland was never enough. Ten Hag should have demanded. Instead of going for Mount, he should have just said, look, we need a striker. Like, we're going to have to sacrifice the midfield position. Which, let's be honest, we haven't really needed this season. We had cover there. One position we didn't have cover was at the forward, in the forward area, in the number nine department. We could have got someone in the summer. 
alongside Rasmus Hoyland. We didn't. Everyone knew what we needed. Ten Hag didn't get him. Whether that's the club's fault or his fault, he wanted Mason Mount, though, and that money could have gone on another forward. That's what I'm saying with that. That's just my side of it. Again, he hasn't been helped by the club, but he hasn't helped himself. Eric Ten Hag should drop Rashford on his own actions. Robbie, he should. He's not going to, though. Malps, uh, is Adam grinding Eric in uh, that thumbnail by any chance? No, I'm not grinding. That's Andy's job. Remember that, Malps. <coughs> oh, come on. Uh, all managers protect players. Not like this, Jonathan. Come on, mate. You know more than that, Jonathan. This is just beyond, like, he has to do better. We are going to work on things in training. It wasn't his best performance, but we know he's got more. These are simple things that the manager can say. But Ten Hag to say he's progressing, he's okay, he wants to contribute and do things and win things. We're not seeing any of that. We're not seeing any of that. And he can see that. And for him to just ignore the two games against Brentford and Chelsea and go back to games before that, that's like, no... You haven't got time in the Premier League to just go back and skip two games. You have to say what's happened in front of you. And in both of them games, he was fucking dog shit. <laughs> Excuse me for swearing. But he was. That's what he does to me. A random question in the Super Chat. Uh, what camera do you use for your live? And uh, is this OBS? It is OBS. And it is a Sony Alpha 6 400. Just so you know. <laughs> or anyone knows. Very good camera. Very, very good. I love it. Simple, small, powerful. That's the type of mid. That's the type of uh, striker we needed. Want it in the summer. Straightforward. Ah. <laughs> Desperados are back. Cliff, don't laugh at him. Don't laugh at him. Malps, you've set it all up, haven't you? That's what it is. Uh, the Glazers will continue to call the shots at this club. They can't, mate. The Ineos won't let them do that. It, I keep saying it. Uh, I, I just don't see how Ineos are going to allow the Glazers to tell them what they are doing. They are hiring people. They are firing people. And they will be the ones that bring in the players as well. Uh, I think the Glazers will be... <coughs> excuse me. I think the Glazers will be... Uh, in they will be in communication. They have to be, but I think it will be Ineos uh, that do make the final call. Uh, Darren Giles, thank you for that super super chat, my man. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, he says on Rashford, the big problem is the people's uh, the people he's surrounding himself uh, with. He needs to face to face with. Mike Tyson, that man could share some wisdom about having the wrong people around uh, you in your prime. There's a few people he could go and have a face-to-face -face with, Darren. It's a very good point that, do you know what? Just try and do something different. Reach out. Reach out and figure out why things are going wrong. I think that's important. Like, we, like there was a chance that we all thought like Marcus Rashford was just being uh, something else could have been wrong uh, but the way he comes out and talks you can just tell that his head is just being filled with absolute garbage by the people around him it really is commercial club remember Rashford assets loads of question marks that's a super chat from Thomas Mack uh, McArdle uh, asset for what mate like Manchester United are dropping out of Europe these sponsors are not going to sponsor a team that's not in Europe Marcus Rashford and his commercial revenue, whatever he brings in, this has to be a thing of the past. I hope any of us are looking at this, but this club, I don't think, can get any more money out of Marcus Rashford. I don't think they can. Like, I think they've maxed him out. He's gone. And when he's not in the team, what use is he as a commercial asset? Because that's the way it's going. Uh, another super chat in from MDR Samurai says, Adam... What type of iron do you use for your green sheet during the TIFO watch-alongs? Stay positive, my brother. This uh, this too shall pass. Forever United TV. We're not going to pass. Forever, Forever United TV is exactly what it is in the name. It's forever. It's going to go on forever, mate. 
as far as the sheet goes, just mind your own business. It's fine as it is. And it's nice, clear sky coming through the green screen right now. Yes, I let people in behind the scenes and they throw it right back in my face. <laughs> you know I'm joking. Uh, <clears throat> loads of football agents have been the wrong kind of advisors. I cannot disagree. I cannot disagree, Graham. You are dead right. Uh, agents... There are good agents, there are bad agents. We know this in football, we hear the conversations all the time. And, yeah, look at Paul Pogba. Look at Mino Raiola, who he represented. Like, a lot of the players absolutely loved him and idolised him and seen him as a father figure. Uh, but when it comes to football clubs, like, he really did not care. Like, he was there for the players, but was he there for the players? They can be there all they want in their personal lives, but it's the advice when it comes to the football side of things, that's what they should be. Uh, that's what they should be looking to prioritise when it comes to their agent, for, to their clients. Uh, another super chat in from Nate. Thank you, Nate. Uh, now you've got players posting on Instagram about how we deserve more. Uh, the club and the players are so tone deaf. Concede like that, you deserve nothing. Nate, 100% agree with that. Uh, I've seen, like, I think Garnacho posted. Can you know what? Garnacho deserve more. He has to say we deserve more, but that guy runs his socks off. What is it, 31 starts in a row right now? Credit to the club. I think that what start he's on, I think he's on around about eight goals now or something like that. I'm not too sure this season. He's on seven or eight goals this season. A few assists along with that. He's having a very, very good season. Uh, and yeah, him coming out and saying it, I can sort of forgive him for that because he did deserve more out of that game. Two goals, got man of the match. So, so stupid football is these days that the man of the match is sat on the bench with two goals and then the guy walks off with the winning with the winner, uh, having scored an hat trick for Chelsea in Cole Palmer. <laughs> I mean, come on. You, you couldn't have written it, could you? Any better. That was a proper United script, that, wasn't it? <laughs> there you go, Garnacho. There's your man of the match, Trophy. <laughs> As Cole Palmer walks off with a match ball, having scored the winner in the 11th minute of injury time. Oh, God. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we love you too, MDR. Don't you worry, mate. I'm only joking with you like you are with us. There's good banter on here. Uh, <clears throat> Adam is... Uh, Adam, if Ten Hag out, who in? Nagelsmann for me. It's the only one I'll go for. I don't want any of the others. My like Ancelotti I would take, but he's not going to come. I'm realistic. Uh, I would take Nagelsmann. I've already explained loads of videos why I would take him as well. I just think he is the, the next thing. I think he's been wasted on international duty. I really do. Most of the club's sponsorship deals are written where the number of drops by 15% for missing out on a Champions League and even bigger number uh, of no Europe at all. A second consecutive year and they can terminate the deal. These are the problems that you will have. You can talk about Rashford's commercial uh, importance to Manchester United all day if you want. But when it comes down to these bigger sponsorship deals, the only thing that matters is that that club is advertising that business at the highest level on the big stages, on the big TV channels, and United are nowhere near any of it. Like, United are on TV now. Just for laughing reasons. By the way, just wanted to touch on that. The ref, the Premier League, Sky, BT, TNT, whatever you call them, they're all an absolute joke. A serious joke. How they have changed Manchester United away at Crystal Palace. London, again, 8 o'clock on a Monday. No, not just any Monday. A bank holiday Monday. So that's everyone's family, family weekend ruined because United have been moved for TV purposes, to a Monday night. It is an absolute joke. Why are we being moved to a Monday night? Again, a night game at Crystal Palace. People in work the next day. Like Andy Mitten said it in his tweet earlier on. Is there any consideration for the match-going football fan these days at all? He's seen many of fans walk out the door and miss late winners at Crystal Palace because the last train they're going to miss. It's an absolute joke. Absolute joke. It's a farce how Manchester United have been drawn in that 8 o'clock kickoff against Crystal Palace. It really is. It is so unfair on the fans. 
The only thing that can cheer me up is a massive donation like what Post Life has just given in five members, taken by Madhouse. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think, oh, what was your name again now? It's in Chinese, I think, there, but I can't remember the name. Uh, MK Fox, uh, Abbas Tobe, uh, Hazard, 2K13. Was there another one? Uh, no, I think I said them all there, didn't I? Post Life Legend. Um, thank you, everyone, for giving the big ups to Post Life in the chat as well. We look after our members on this channel. We make sure that they're involved in everything. We make sure that they're protected as well by idiots. That doesn't happen a lot on this channel because they're kicked out straight away. I've only found out about some idiots that have been in on the chat at certain times that I didn't even know were there because my mods were on top of things. It's the best community out there, guys, and everyone is welcome in. Uh, Graham, uh, because United are supporting Cast now, Adam, we will get Sunday or Saturday if United are back in the title race. You know, I was just going to go on to that then, Graham. It's like people only tune into United now because we're a laughing stock. We're on TV because they want to see the next episode of Circus the United. It's a crap one, that one, but you know what I mean. Circus de Soleil, Circus de United. That's what we are. We're just, we're a comedy act. This football club uh, is, it's just, it is, it's just a laughing stock. And that's why we're on TV. People want to see the next leading, uh, the next episode of Clown Central. Uh, MDR, what the hell? 20 donated memberships. Wow, that is the biggest contribution we have had on the channel uh, ever in terms of memberships. MDR, everybody, just stop what you're doing right now. Stand up and applaud this man. He is full of banter. He is a laugh and he is generous, to say the least. You absolute diamond of a man, MDR. I'm so happy. Uh, that we've got people like you in the community here on FUTV. Thank you so much. That is ridiculous and not needed, but much appreciated. Uh, the new members, I'll go through them now. I've seen some familiar names already, and I love that. Uh, Jay, uh, Caffel, Squire, Sanjay, uh, Tony MUFC, uh, Gillet. Oh, it's gone off my screen. It's spoiled my flow now. One second. There's that many of them. But YouTube just like resets the whole page when you go down. So we got to Gilly, Boo, uh, Silly Goose, uh, Shankar, uh, Jags, Bletchley, uh, Rusty's, uh, Rusty's Nail, Robert Murray, uh, Ginger82, uh, Maradona. Is that everyone? No, there's more. There's more. Here we go. Uh, Alan. Alan Liddington. Dan Sullivan. Uh, Kevin McAllister. Uh, Simon Heron. Uh, top of the league. It's a blast from the past. I think that's everyone. Sorry if I've missed anyone out, but there's only one man that needs to be celebrated in that, and that is MDR Samurai. What a way to finish up. And we are what we're only 14 likes away from 300 as well, guys. It's a mega show tonight. Everyone's involved in joining their Friday night tonight. I think we all need to get together and sort of just have this moment before we enter the absolute. Oh, what's what can we call this weekend, guys? Give me some names in the chat right now. Like, what are we titling this weekend? We are going into hit the chat right now. What are we heading into this weekend, guys? Come on, it's up to you now. Tell me in the chat. I want to know what you think, what you want to title this weekend as, because it's a scary one, isn't it? What are we entering? Come on, give me a title. Give me a title. Give me a title. Why is no one doing it? <laughs> Everyone's still uh, thanking uh, MDR. <laughs> Uh, Thomas uh, McArdle, welcome to the Members Club again. Mad Red 2 as well. Appreciate that, mate. Smash a like, everyone. We just did, we just went, we just absolutely destroyed over 300 likes there in that one shot. Uh, let's see what we got. Before the Bloody Sunday. Oh, I like that one, Danny. It's a good one. I think that one sticks. Eric Tanag, Finale, Last Chance Saloon, Disappointments, uh, Windstorm, Make or Break, 
I am thinking, says Mr. Miracle. This weekend, says Barry. Barry, banter FC. I love it. Master Disaster, says Daz. <laughs> Pile Pulverised, says Fred. Win or bust for the Honest Tiger. Eric Tanagout, says Graham. Uh, says Michael. A last chance saloon. Believe. Make or break weekend. Last chance saloon. Uh, God, yeah. Madness. I think everyone's feeling it, aren't they? They really are. But guys, yeah, that does Survival Sunday. <laughs> I like that one at the end. That is us all done and dusted, guys. Go and enjoy your Friday night. To get yourselves ready for weekend. I'm back tomorrow. We'll be looking ahead properly to the Liverpool game, obviously, through tomorrow. And taking in all sides. It's looking good from the Liverpool side. Uh, I think Endo's coming back as well. All their injuries are clearing up. The scoring goals for four. And they've won 11 games in the last 13. Need to go on. No, don't ruin the Friday night, Adam. Let's save that for the weekend. But guys, uh, I appreciate every single one of you in the chat. Everyone who's just tuned in and just wanted to watch. Thank you again. You are all legends in my eyes. And without you, I don't think I'd get through the season. I really wouldn't. And to the 32 new members on this one stream alone, welcome to what is the best YouTube community out there. And you guys now are also invited, along with the Members Club, to the watch-alongs, which are on T4 whenever we do an away game. We are going to do some other games this week as well. I think we're going to do some Champions League games. So, guys, uh, stay tuned in. It's not just United ones we're going to do because I'm at the games against Liverpool and Sheffield United coming up. We're going to be doing watch-alongs for Bournemouth and a couple of other Champions League games as well. So I'll keep you all posted in the Members section for that. Thank you, guys. Uh, love you all. That was a fantastic show. Cheers to everybody. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great Friday. Uh, go and have a beer. Go and chill out. Try not to think about football too much. It will end your... It will. <laughs>